are talking about tips on writing a better specific aims page. I'm going to give you five tips that you can use to write a stronger, more compelling, more persuasive aims page. Because of course, your aims page is the most important single page in your entire R01 application. And so it's really, really, really important to grab people's attention right from the beginning and make sure that they understand the, the big picture of what you're trying to accomplish. So that's what we're talking about today. If you are new around here, I'm Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and I work with early career researchers who are trying to get funded at NIH. Okay, so let's talk about AIMS pages and the ways that you can improve them. So I've just pulled up my notes here. I'm going to give you those five tips. Tip number one is to go from broad to specific. And the reason that you want to go from broad to specific is that you always want to provide a bit more context to what you are doing, what you are proposing, uh, before you actually get into the details. It's just uh, more in line with the way that we communicate the way that we read and the way that we make sense of the world. So moving from broad to specific really helps your reader understand the big picture before you get to the details. So it's really important in an AIMS page to talk about the context in which your research is taking place, a little bit of the background that we need to know to understand why your research is important and what the big sort of overarching scientific problem is that you are trying to solve. And then the more specific gap in knowledge that you are trying to fill in this proposal. So you really want to start out broad. And then as you work your way through the AIMS page, you're getting more and more specific around the, the details of what you're doing within reason. We will get to that tip in a moment. Um, but that first tip is to move from broad to specific. Okay, tip number two is to think of your aims page in four different sections. So as we just talked about, that first section is really your background, the sort of contextual information that you need to introduce the specifics of what you're doing. So you would include that big sort of overarching scientific or clinical or population level problem you're trying to solve. Uh, you would also talk about, you know, what we know about the problem and what we don't know about the problem, which is your gap in knowledge. And you would also give your audience a reason to believe that filling the gap in knowledge actually matters, right? What becomes possible when we fill that gap in knowledge? Typically, that is what you would try to incorporate into that very first paragraph to provide that sort of overarching introduction and background to what it is that you're going to do. That second section in your AIMS page is where you get into your broader research goals and the main objective of your project as a whole. And this is an area where some uh, researchers get a little bit confused, the difference between objectives and aims. So your overall objective is your objective for the project as a whole. So what is it that you are trying to accomplish as a whole with your project? your specific aims are the, the means by which you accomplish that overall goal. Another way to think of it is that overall objective is to fill the gap in knowledge that you identified in that first paragraph. So if you think about it more generally, the, the gap in knowledge, that's, that's the main objective. You're trying, to, you're trying to fill that gap in knowledge. OK, so in that second section of your aims page, you're trying to give your readers, your reviewers, a sense of what your overall program of research looks like, what the main objective of this project is and how you arrived at that main objective or that research question or that general hypothesis. Right. How did you get there? What kind of supporting evidence is there that's leading you to arrive at this particular question or hypothesis? And so that's where you would include things like preliminary data, other supporting evidence from the literature, that sort of stuff. 
Then that third section of your aims page is where you actually get into the aims. So again, notice we're moving from broad to specific, right? So that third section is where you would talk about what you are actually going to do. So what are those specific aims that you're going to achieve that will help you um, once you complete each of those aims will help you achieve that overall objective, right? And then we get to that fourth section, which is where you kind of pull it all together and you say, um, you talk about your expected outcomes, right? So once you've accomplished all of those aims, what do you expect to have? What is the sort of concrete or tangible deliverable that you're going to have at the end of the project? So that's the structure that will help you move from broad to specific if you divide uh, or if you think of your aims page in those four different sections. Okay, tip number three is to speak to your target audience, right? As someone who reviews AIMS pages and full grants day in and day out, one thing that I ask my PIs right off the bat is, where, where is this headed? Which, which study section is this going to? Which institute are you targeting? And the reason that I ask that is because sometimes your research will straddle a couple of uh, subject matter areas, right? And depending on how you describe the research that you're doing, it's going to be really compelling and really uh, understandable to one of those groups and, and probably not the other. So the things that one group of experts care about is not the same as what the other group of experts care about. And you need to be really clear on which sort of group of experts you're targeting if your research does tend to sort of span um, some different subject matter areas or there or you have sort of multiple options in terms of where where you can submit or where you can target. And so this is really all about framing. This is about making sure that you are describing your project in a way that is really going to resonate with the people you want it to resonate with and that is going to allow them to get really excited and enthusiastic about what you're proposing to do. So this typically involves doing a bit of homework in advance in terms of figuring out which institute you are targeting and which study section makes the most sense for your project to land in. And while you ultimately don't have control over that, again, the framing, the way you describe your research can end up helping you get your application into the right study section. So it's something to really pay attention to, something that is really worth investigating and um, focusing on so that you are, you're speaking to the right people, speaking to the right audience. Okay, tip number four is you want to take a 30,000 foot view of your project. And that's what you're really trying to accomplish with your AIMS pages. You want to give a high level overview of your entire project. There really isn't the room on an AIMS page to get into a lot of detail. And so your job on the AIMS page is to get people excited about the big picture and then trust that when they start reading the full application, that's where you'll give them all the details. But it's really tempting on an AIMS page to try to cram as much in there as you can to show that you know what you're talking about, that you have the right kind of expertise and that you, you've really thought this through. But what can often end up happening is it, it, there's too much crammed in there and it's hard to follow the story. And so what you're really trying to accomplish on that AIMS page, again, is that big picture overview that just gives your reviewers a, a taste of what's to come, but gives them enough of a complete snapshot, enough of a complete high level view that they're excited to read the rest of your application. Okay. Mm -hmm. So try to keep it as high level and sort of conceptual as you can, knowing that you'll have an opportunity in the research plan to get into a lot more depth and detail. All right. Tip number five is to generate some excitement. So this is something that is really uh, important in your AIMS page, but that does take a lot of practice. And we help our clients generate excitement using a framework we call problem gap hook solution. And so I've introduced some of those concepts earlier in this lesson around that sort of big overarching 
uh, scientific or clinical or population level problem you're trying to solve, the specific gap in knowledge that you're trying to fill, the reason that it's important to do this research in the first place, and then the actual solution you're proposing, which is your project. And so if you're able to do that well and explain it um, clearly and concisely, that will help generate that excitement. But again, one of the other ways that you can generate excitement is making sure that you're speaking to the right audience. So all of these tips that I've given you uh, work together to help you write a really compelling, a really clear, a really interesting AIMS page, which is exactly what you wanna be doing with this vitally, vitally important page uh, in your R01 application. So quick recap, those five tips for you again, Number one, you want to move from broad to specific. Number two, you want to divide your aims page into four different sections to help you move from broad to specific. Number three, you want to speak to your target audience. Number four, you want to keep your aims page high level. And number five, you want to generate some excitement. All right, so if you found that helpful, uh, we invite you to join our free resource library where you will have a special lesson on how to write an AIMS page, how to go through those four different sections that I talked about. Um, and it kind of walks you through in a bit more detail what you need to include there and how to do it. So you can find the link to sign up for our free resource library in the video description underneath this lesson. I will see you next time.